thank you for this night. Thank you for the men who have uh, battled the weather and power outages and, and ridiculous traffic and rough roads and one thing after another just to get here. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to meet together in your name, to serve you and to serve others. Lord, help us to have the, the correct heart, to know that this is a privilege. It's not a burden. It's not a, 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 a oh, lack of a better word, a weight. Because you're, you're carrying it. We get to just be a part of it. This is your show. This is your ministry. This is your body. Help us to have that heart to be in line with you. To see people and others and ourselves through your eyes. And that will burn something in our hearts to want to do more, to sacrifice more, uh, but in your way, not our way. Lord, we invite you here. We want you to fill this place, every inch, fill every body here, this building here. Be here with us and us with you. In Jesus and Holy Spirit's name, amen. amen. All right, so for the point of tonight, so we had our first training night, <clears throat> and the point was that to actually get some training to kind of get the idea of what it's going to be like to uh, facilitate a group, have that servant's heart to know your group week after week because we're going to encourage the guys to stay in the breakout group so they won't be changed so you can build relationship. Uh, they'll get to know you and you'll get to know them. Okay? But this week, what we want to do is get the sense of what a, a typical forum night is like. So we have the configuration of the tables, for example, uh, and the flow of it. So the tables are pretty blank right now because we didn't have all the materials and et cetera. But to kind of give you guys an idea, what we're going to have is the same configuration in the, in the uh, front. What we wanted is to flow guys this way and not through the side door. So that door would actually be locked. You can go out, you just can't come in that way. Bathrooms, et cetera, that way as well. But to flow that way, so you would have sign in over there and like, for example, A through M on one table and then N through Z on another table so we could kind of split the lines up. And then they would go through and grab an agenda like you guys did. And then they would come down and there's registration set up and we would, anybody who would be willing to bring their laptop so we can set it up and we have the registration all ready for Warm Beach, all set up. All they have to do is get on there uh, and then they'll come down and there'll be t-shirts and et cetera uh, in that lobby area. All the snacks that are there right now will be outside with the cook kitchen. So they'll be set up outside, they'll provide the meals, and here's one thing I wanna make sure you guys understand, and please, please pass the word on. So this is a um, King's Riders come from um, Everett, uh, Christian Motorcycle Association, bringing their trailer, it's a full kitchen. They're gonna provide the dinner. Five, six dollars, I haven't found, found the, heard the final number. But five, six dollars is a lot cheaper than McDonald's. So a lot of our guys who are, who are going to be our guests are going straight from work because they get off straight to here. And they typically stop at McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's, etc. and they spend eight, nine dollars. So the meal that's being provided is actually better for them. It's less expensive. It's going to be, it's going to be better and less expensive. But also all the profit goes to missions. So let that know. This is, this is first. It's first for them. It's first for us. They go, how many guys do you think you're on feet? I, I don't know. I don't know. So they're, they're going to prepare the best they can with, I don't know. <laughs> right? But if we get the word out, then the first week would get a good indicator what the second week would look like and the third week. And then they could be better prepared each week. Um, but our guys don't know that because this is very new. So I'm counting on you guys to let other guys know through your texts, through your conversations, through your emails, through and whatever means. Let them know, hey, I, don't you run straight from work to the forum? Yeah, let me tell you about the, the dinner that's being provided. And just let them know because I was sure they would participate in that because it's less expensive for one and what it benefits for two. Okay? So now it's their, still their choice. We're not going to strong arm them, but if they know about it, I'm sure they would choose to buy dinner here instead. Okay? 
Also, we are going to need help uh, on, on the forum opening. So if you can get here um, about 6.30, prayer is going to open up at 6.15. Chris is going to be in the nursery probably uh, doing prayer groups. So anybody who would love to be a part of that every week or, or for many weeks, uh, uh, please join him and other gentlemen. Jeff was there tonight. Um, and also we need greeters. We want people to feel welcome before they even get in the doors. We want them to have our, their first handshake before they even walk in the door. I'm glad you're here. My name is James. What's your name? And to, to direct them, okay, here's the sign-in table and etc. And then we need people behind the sign-in table to help people sign in. Sign in here, grab that piece of paper, and then go down to the. And then we need people behind for the t-shirt sales. We need people to greet them in multiple places. To kind of corral, not corral, that's a terrible word. To, <laughs> to force, to coerce, yeah. to, to guide <laughs> into the property. But that they feel welcome before they walked in the door. And all the way into here. Because some guys have been here one, five, six times. But some of them, this is their very first time. And they don't know where to go. They don't know what to expect. A, guy, a group of guys, there are 100, 150, 200 guys. For some, that's, that's a little weird. Okay? That's a little weird. So anything that we can bring their stress down, bring their comfort level up, they're going to come back. They're going to enjoy themselves. They're going to be present. They're going to be present. And just maybe they'll hear, hear the Spirit. Just maybe if we bring that down. Okay? But we can't do that with one or two guys. So I'm asking you guys to partner with us. So if you can get here early and, and just jump in where, where it's needed, that would be great. Um, so keep that in mind. So 6.30, even if you got here at 6.45, when you get here, as soon as you get here, if you can help out, that would be awesome. Okay? T-shirts have been ordered, kind of ordered, or about ordered. So uh, they will be here uh, for the first forum. Uh, so you can order, order. You guys are going to get a men's advance t-shirt for being facilitators. But if you want to get a huge shirt or hoodie, uh, we ordered those. So you can purchase those. Um, guys, what are we, the hoodies are $30. What are the t-shirts? $15? $20. $20 for the t-shirts. Um, and the, the logo changed. The huge logo changed just a little bit. So it'll be a new. It's way cooler. So, all right, so those are the kind of things I want to keep you guys in mind. So, uh, again, how about with the prayer team, greeters, tables? Chris, would you like to talk a little bit about the prayer team um, before I go on? Yeah, come on. They want you on video. All right, uh, every year now we've had a. Every year now we've had uh, a prayer group that happens before the forum, it ha usually about a half an hour before the forum starts. And it's just, it's an open prayer time. Just come in, uh, pray as you f feel led, as the Spirit leads you. Leave if you have to leave, but, but some nights there's only me in there, some nights there's, there's seven or eight guys. Um, I know it's hard to get here early. I know we all have work constraints and family constraints, and I understand that. But I would just encourage all of you to be in prayer for this forum. Um, you know, it, it, the success of this forum isn't going to be based on, on how well the musicians play or how well the speakers speak. It's going to be on how God is here and how much we petition Him to, to, to run this and to be the forward of this and, and to draw men in. And, to, and So join me in the room. If you can't make it on the way here, Talk to God. Pray for the men that are here. Pray for the men that set this up. Pray for the speakers, for the musicians. Pray for the men that are walking and that have never been here before. Pray that God opens the hearts and ears of everybody here to hear His words. So, that's all. Thank you, Chris. Okay. All right. So, um, I say this every year, but just I want to make sure everyone here understands it, that we are one of our main focus, what our main purpose is, is to, to build on unity. Okay, remember our, uh, the huge name, honoring God, unifying man, growing in Christ, and equipping disciples. 
So how do we impact uh, f five, six, 10, 15, 30, 60 different ministries is to focus on the unity. Jesus is our savior and only through him. How do I worship? We can let that go. If you see James dancing like a, you know, up here and that kind of goes, wow, okay. Well, that's the way I want to worship. That's beautiful. Or if you see James up here on his knees or sitting in the chair quietly, that's beautiful. So I want you guys to feel that you have permission to worship exactly the way God is asking you to, uh, to worship. Don't feel pressured by the guy to worship like him next to you. And don't feel pressured that you shouldn't worship the way you are because someone else is worshiping next to you. And to let the other men know that too. Because I'll tell you, one of the coolest things is up here when there's 200 of you behind and singing with all your hearts and I can feel the hairs on the back of my neck. That I can't, there is, I have yet to experience anything like that. It is absolutely amazing. 200 men singing with their hearts. Maybe it was close, it was Darren right in front of me singing right to me. That was pretty cool. So I want you guys to have that permission tonight and to share that permission with other guys. Because again, 200 guys, 150 guys, whatever number of guys, it could be weird. If that you're not used to that, okay. So with that being said, Bill, would you lead us in worship? Absolutely. What would be some of the purpose of the forum? And Josh Hill in, in a men's group read uh, something from a study we were going through, and that kind of rang my bell. I go, "There's, there's a part." And he said that a pastor's job is to comfort the inflicted, and to inflict the comfortable. Think about that. And when I was thinking about that and letting that sink in, I'm going, who would be a really good speaker to do that for us? To make sure that where our afflictions are, we're getting comforted. But where we're too comfortable, he'll give us afflictions and challenge and push. And I really couldn't think of anybody other than Ed McDowell. Uh, several years ago, he uh, was our speaker for our retreat and did a fantastic job on forgiveness. I mean, it really woke many of us up. And I was looking at how he leads his life. I'm getting the privilege to get to know him over the years. And I see how he runs, how he manages, how he leads Warm Beach. But it doesn't stop there. I see how he leads and he loves his family and his wife. I see how he does that at, in the downtown Stanwood on the street corner in Seattle. Well, I haven't actually seen him, but I, where I have seen him and how he interacts with others. There's that character that when no one's watching, that's Ed McDowell. And I'm going, there is the perfect speaker for our form to encourage us, to inspire us, to be who we need to be for the next set of guys. So let's welcome Ed McDowell. So if anything I say tonight creates discomfort for you and inflicts something on you, James told me I could. And if anything is comforting because you're in a tough spot, then uh, I give God the praise for that. I thank you guys for what you're doing, to step in and just help make this forum thing happen. Thank you for being men in the body of Christ. We need a lot of encouragement today, don't we? I mean, it is, it is uh, the bombardment that's just distracting us or crushing spirit or stuff that's just hitting us every way possible is overwhelming in life today. <clears throat> I was on the road some over the weekend and I was going to visit one of my sons. And so a couple of my daughters were with me and we were listening to a, a pastor uh, out of Texas named Matt. And he, he shared a story that I just thought it's just straight down the center of where we're going uh, tonight. So, you know, I thank Matt for the story, but it's about a buddy of his. He was talking about how his buddy went 
to get, uh, do the engagement with his bride-to-be. And so the story plays out like this. He, he, lets his, he lets his gal know, you know, you're going to need most of the day. And so they get in their everyday car, and they head out driving, and they end up down at a boat dock on a lake. They get out of a car, there's a boat waiting. They take this boat, they go cruising out on the lake, and a beautiful day. And then, that, and then as they get out in the lake, there's this island in the middle of the lake. So they, they go and stop at this island. And on the island, already set up, is this picnic. And it's got all the romantic touches that you know, guys are good at doing when they're in the hunt. And maybe they uh, don't, aren't, aren't as good a little later on in the journey. But anyways, it it's just hits it out of the park. Well, they have their picnic and stuff, and they get back on the boat, they come back to the dock. When they get at the dock, the everyday car's not there, but a limousine is there. So they get out of the boat, they go get into a limousine, and then the limousine takes them uh, to an airport where there's a privately chartered plane waiting, small plane, they get onto the plane, they fly, it's a small airplane, and they land in a dirt uh, grass strip out in the country somewhere. They get off of this plane, and here's an old jalopy truck. It is beat up. It's had its life. And they get in this thing, and they hobble into this rural college. And at the college, they head down to the chapel at the college, and the chapel is decked out. There's candles lit. There's the flowers on the floor. And up at the front is this huge envelope with her name on it. And so, uh, as she goes up to open the envelope, of course, he drops to his knee and the ring comes out and the proposal's on and she says yes. I mean, and it's a, it's a big, big wow, right? Now, as I'm listening to this story, I'm just kind of thinking, uh, I probably just need to go apologize to Bev right now because I wasn't anywhere close to that creative. And he, he set a bar that most of us never even attempted to reach in our thinking. But, but anyways, he goes on to say, now I've got to tell you about all the vehicles in this story. Okay? The car we went to the boat dock in, that's our everyday life. And I promise you that I'm going to be there for you in our everyday life. Now the boat and the plane, um, the lim limousine, that's when the times are really good and the adventure's screaming hot and we're just having a great time. Now, I'm going to be there with you when the adventures are good, life is good, it's going well. Now he said to the truck, that's us getting old. And where there'll be a time we come in life and, you know, we're not working the way we used to, but man, we put a lot of good miles on the road and, you know, we could still get around and I'm going to be there for you when we get old. Now the question that we don't know the answer to, that I don't know the answer to, is how did that guy pursue these promises? Because the promises are awesome. But if he doesn't back them up, all he had was a big flashy start, and he's going to have a really hurt lady on his hands. And sometimes I think that's how we find ourselves approaching Christ and his promises is kind of out of that context. Is that we're looking at his promises, but we're saying, man, that's almost too good to be true. And by the way, there's been a whole bunch of other people in my life that they started out with the big wow, and I leaned into them, and only to have not so big a wow backing up that start. And all of a sudden, I came crashing down. And the truth is, I'm kind of mistrustful, I'm broken, I'm a little bit bitter, and God and his promises... You think that what that guy did over the top, if I really start reading God's word for what it says the way it says it, his promises are literally unbelievable. They, they are crazy promises. In many ways, they almost feel like they're irrational to my broken self, to your broken self, to the places where trust is, has, has just been shattered. 
And so the challenge that I want to dig into tonight is, are we really digging in and leaning in to the promises of God? Because he hasn't withdrawn them. He hasn't minimized them. He hasn't reduced them. He hasn't said, ah, well, man, America's kind of apathetic or they're too heavy on their entertainment. My promises aren't good there. He hasn't done any Nolan Boyd thing. There's no fine print. His promises are all there in their full measure, in all of their abundance, to transform the way you and I think and live and the way we're to be in relationship with God and with other people. So, um, you know, I direct Warm Beach Camp, and it's governed by a group of people, the board of directors. They're all volunteers. Awesome group of people. And they gave me a gift. And it's a gift that actually, uh, it impacts, I'm not going to get to be with you guys at Men's Advance because of this gift. That's the bummer side of it, because I love Men's Advance. I've been there, I don't know how many years of my life, but the majority of them, I've been at Men's Advance in my lifetime. But they gave me a gift of three months of rest and renewal to step away from the ministry for three months starting January 17th and to come back right after uh, spring breaks over uh, in April. And they said, we want you just to be able to draw closer to God, draw closer to your family, and to have a time of profound renewal without having to produce and do the things that you produce and do for Christ and for the blessing of others all the time. And I'm grateful for it. But I'm going to miss you guys. At least a little bit. <laughs> and uh, no, I really am. But here's the question that God's been proposing to me as I'm heading into that time. What are you doing to draw closer to me, Ed? That's the question. What are you doing to draw closer to me? You're doing a lot of good stuff. You're, a lot of the stuff, some of it's trivial, but it's just fun. Um, I'm not really talking to you about what you're doing in your life. I'm kind of okay with it. But I want to know what you're doing to get closer to me. Because I'm all here. And I'm all here for all of you. And one of the things that he, one of the places he's taken to, uh, me to that I want to take you to tonight is really leaning into his promises because it's in faith leaning into his promises that this, this abundance of connection with God flows. So let's dig down in that a little bit and, and just hang in there with me for a few minutes. But, you know, it's in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, really familiar passage, but it, it it starts in verse 3, as we get to know Jesus better, what are you doing to lean into me? As we get to know Jesus better, His divine power gives us everything we need for living a godly life. His divine power gives us 10% of what we need for living a godly life. No. It gives us everything. He's called us to receive His own glory and goodness. Oh man, we could spend days on receiving his, his own glory and goodness. His own glory and goodness. Uh, unbelievable to think about receiving the goodness of God. I mean, goodness that's not tainted. Goodness that doesn't have uh, uh, an agenda behind it that's going to sneak up on you and bite you. Goodness that does, isn't strings attached. Glory that's pure. Glory that's not seductive. Glory that is restorative and lifts you up. Glory that clears your mind and helps you get out of temptation. Glory that encourages your spirit. Glory that just makes it different when you're walking and living around other people because you see them differently. You, you don't... You don't see them based on what you see, but you see them for the love that God has for them. I can't do that in my own strength. And there's things I see in people that I just, I kind of pass judgment really quick. Or maybe a thought goes and you go, wow, that was an ugly thought that just hit me. That was horrible. Well, God's glory is there. And all of a sudden, wow. 
you see the person completely differently. Well, then it goes on to say, and that same mighty power, he's given us all of his rich and wonderful promises. He's given these to us. He's promised them so that we will escape the corruption of the world caused by our own evil desires. I mean, that's, that's right there. That's kind of a big picture little phrase there. I, do you have a, ever have a hard time going to the doctor? Do you ever have to have somebody kind of pry you loose to go to the doctor? Somebody's got to become your handler and say, you're going. And we kind of, you know, we kind of come up with our own solutions and we think, I got it figured out. I know what I'm doing. And, and we, we try all this stuff. It's still not working. And then a long time later, we finally go. Well, then the doctor tells us what to do. It gives us you're going to need to do this. You're going to need to rest like this. You're going to need to, I want you to lower your cholesterol. And what do we do? Well, let me go out and have some bacon and eggs while I think about what the doctor said. What's he know anyways? And then let me just get some medication that's stronger than my habits. To, I mean, we, we are so stubborn that way where when, when the right thing is provided to us, we still resist it. It happens all the time in our life. I've had Bev speak truth to me, my wife. I've had her speak truth to me, and I reject it because she spoke it to me. I didn't want it coming from her. I mean, that was too close to home. But she was spot on. This morning in our devotions, we were reading right here. And this is what we were talking about. This is out of Colossians 3, 12 and 14. 12 through 14. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts. Put that on. Compassionate hearts. Kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bearing with one another and, and this is the part that got me this morning. If one has a complaint against another, forgive each other. That's hard in your own living room. <laughs> That's hard in your own devotional circle with who it is you're accountable to. And we've got, we call it BFD, Big Family Dynamics. We've got nine kids, 11 grandkids, and we're a hopping place, and it's messy, and it's alive, and it's happening, and sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's broken, and yet God's there all the time. And in all of this, you know, if you have a complaint, now, if you have a complaint with one another, call Fox News. No, if you have a complaint with one another, Find your favorite Colin show. If you have a complaint, I mean, our culture has permission to say, we ought to harp on this or that. We've got my right, my free speech. You know, that's a whole nother subject. And when God set speech free, he created stuff. Our words have a ton of power. If you ever want to know more on that, get going more on that, ask Lauren Isaac right down here. Talk to you about the power of God's words. He's taught me a lot about that. And how speech binds or sets people free. Here in our devotions this morning, it was if we have complaint with one another. With nine kids, do you think Bev and I ever have complaint with how the other parent handles the situation? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, maybe every day. We got a different opinion with each other about something. That's not bad. It happens. But what's our response? Take up the complaint. Make a cause. Make your case. No. Forgive each other. And what I said to Bev this morning said, I've taken up far too many complaints. And I'm here to live forgiveness. I'm sorry. Right? Mm -hmm. See, that's one of God's great promises. Are you leaning into his promise? The promise of forgiveness. Where else do you get forgiveness delivered? Except through a source that's outside of you and me. That is unlimited. That's unending in nature. 
That literally, instead of taking up complaint and making a big issue, that the promise delivered is me releasing forgiveness in my marriage, in my family. And more often than not, it's about me getting my head on straight and living out with the heart of forgiveness that Christ has placed in me because he's forgiven me. Hallelujah. That's a freeing promise, man. I mean, that, you want to talk about freedom. You, you get into this promise of forgiveness. And it's unlimited. It's, 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 it's infinite. I'm finite. I got nine kids. If three of them run at me with a question at the same time, I'm overwhelmed. I'm finite. Okay? God's infinite. He's unlimited. The resources... All right, I, I say words to my kids like, yeah, we can do that on Saturday. Then five things come up that impact Saturday, and all of a sudden my word's being compromised. Not because I wanted it to be, but because it happened. And then I got to say, you know, I'm sorry. I meant, I wanted to know my heart, all of this stuff that falls short. But that's not what God says. He says, I forgive you. In fact, I forgive you. Where when you're in me, zero condemnation. Zero. Nothing. When you're in me, zero condemnation. That's another great promise. We've got the promise of forgiveness. We've got the promise of zero condemnation. Where do you go in this world for a zero condemnation zone? Where do you go in this world for a, a zero condemnation place? For 100% acceptance. Not, not, not setting truth aside to be accepted, but in the context of all the truth there is, a big piece of that truth is there's zero condemnation if you are in relationship with me because of what I've done. That leads you to a third promise. We got the promise of righteousness. And righteousness is amazing. Uh, Isaiah said my righteousness is like filthy rags. And any of us that are honest and look at it, we know that that's the case. But Christ says, because of what I did for you on the cross, through the resurrection, I didn't just give you forgiveness, but you now also are the reflection of my righteousness. Oh, I look at that. And I just say, Holy Spirit, help me. I don't deserve that. I can't do it. I know I'll fall short in any of my own efforts. But when you come in and that's reflecting off of me, and my righteous, your righteousness is, is now reflecting through me, and you call me righteous, you give me righteousness. I so don't deserve that. But I got it. Because of his promise. And I'm leaning into his promise. Oh, when I hear things like that, man, there's this, this, this thing that wells up inside of you and it's this promise of joy. Now, differentiate it from happiness and I don't want to parse words, but happiness is just not the same. As I've followed Christ, I've had some really happy times, but I've also had some really horrible times. But man, his joy has showed up in both ends of the spectrum. The promise of joy. I'm not, I'm not going to leave you with a spirit that can't respond. I'm going to fill you with the response that comes from the character of God. And, and it's this promise of leaning into my joy. Let it flow in your life. Oh, this is, this is a tough one because I'll stay in the family dynamic because that's so much of where my world happens. And in the family dynamic... Man, I'm thinking, I want to raise good kids. Boy, they're looking like a bad kid right now. What do I have to do to make them look like a good kid? And what will their future be if they keep doing this? And of course, just like we can supersize anything at the drive through we tend to supersize any offense committed today as becoming catastrophic a few years from now if that's not intercepted. And then all of a sudden, we're getting the joy sucked right out of us. Pretty soon, we go down that road, you're thinking, God, I never should have been a father. Why in the world did I ever sign up for this? And I'm a mess, you know, and blah, blah, blah. We, and we go right down that path, and we're just taking joy off the table, right? And God's told us, no, lean into my joy. Uh, you know, I've got a plan for your kid. The truth is, for all your kids, 
I want you to do the best you can, but I'm the one who's responsible for them, Ed, not you. I want you to be obedient to me and keep joy in the game. I'll give you unlimited joy, in, but you've got to keep it in the game. If you keep behaving in ways that are sucking it right out of the dining room table, or if they're sucking it out right out of the environment, or the air that you breathe, you got to change your game, man, because my joy is unlimited. And I want you leaning into that joy, and I want that joy flowing through you. Does that make sense? It's really interesting to show up with joy. It requires faith when a relationship isn't going well. Because what's our tendency as guys? We like to fix it. I'm not focused on joy here. Baby, we got to get a solution and we got to get it now and nobody's leaving this room until we got the solution on the table. How well does that work? <laughs> that doesn't work well at all. And with adolescent boys, it definitely doesn't work. You know when testosterone starts flowing across the brain? They say it takes for an adolescent young man, it takes about 15 minutes to respond appropriately to a moral situation. But you and I, when we're dealing with that, guys, now, 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 you look at, we don't put time into the equation. God does. So glad he does, right? And if we do that, joy has a chance of showing up there. Because 15 minutes later, instead of having gone through a shouting match for 15 minutes, because testosterone's worked up, 15 minutes, usually a pretty good decision is arrived at. And now you're able to celebrate even though it took a little longer than you wanted, you're able to celebrate the great decision that was made. And there's the air of joy back in the room, in the relationship. Is that making sense? Promise of joy. Oh, there's so, so many promises. I mean, you've got yours, I've got mine. I was talking to Dave Canahan on the way over here tonight. Dave's been an accountability partner of mine for, boy, 10 plus years. And we've gone through it together. We've gone through lots of different things together. But I just asked him, told him what I was doing. I said, what are two of your favorite promises? Just, and, and why? And he said, well, the first one is, um, I will never leave you or I'll never forsake you. That's the first one that came to mind. Well, man, I have watched Dave in his life lean into that promise. When it seemed like some people that he really loved and cared for weren't staying true to what they needed to be staying true to. And just leaning in the promise of God. I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. And then he said, the second one is that you won't be tempted beyond what you can bear. And the Lord will provide a way of escape. Isn't that a great promise? I mean, how many... There's, I, there, I don't know of any other religion that has a promise from their Savior that says, I got an escape route for you if it gets too hot. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Man, I, you know, I was going through something in my life a couple years ago. And, you know, God gave me an escape route. And I was trying, and here's the interesting thing about this. I was trying to make this situation work with everything I had. My heart was right. My intentions were right. I wasn't off trying to do some evil deal behind the scenes. I was working a really tough situation as best as I knew how. And I had people helping me, people praying with me. And it, it was just going the wrong way. And it was just getting worse. And it seemed like the harder I tried with all of my best efforts and lots of prayers and lots of conversations and lots of action steps, it finally got to this point where God just made it really clear, you know, this isn't going to work this way. And he showed a different way. And it's a way that I just swallow some pride. But man, has the trajectory of that situation changed. Dramatically. See, he gave a way of escape 
for everybody involved. Not more than we could bear. And now he's doing his redemptive work. He's doing his transformation. Game on again. And I'm a more rested person. And that's another promise he gives us. I promise you rest. All right. This is one of the really tough ones for us as guys to receive rest. I wonder if each of you were really honest. If you have 10 minutes, just 10 minutes, not the whole day. Just go for 10 minutes. And if you had 10 minutes just dedicated for rest, I wonder what you would really do with those 10 minutes. I'm going to be really honest, okay? How many times would you pull out the addictive device and check, oh yeah, I need to, oh, text, oh, breaking news, oh, you know, and there was seven of the 10 minutes. Now, I'm not saying this is bad. I'm just saying, when God says, I'll give you rest, it implies that we're going to participate in the rest. Yeah, right? Oh, sweet rest. I love, I don't know how you guys feel about hunting, but I'm a hunter. I love hunting camp. Absolutely love hunting camp. And that's where some of my best sleep happens. There's rest where you've just gone out and seen creation for the day. You connected, you've been in the elements, you've been without some elements. And, and you come back and even if the meal you prepared wasn't really that good, it tasted great. <laughs> because of everything, it just is fabulous. And then, you know, you fall in on it, you crash, and you just rest. I was sleeping in my tent this year, and some klutzy deer came tripping over the guide wire of the tent in the middle of the night. Kind of disrupted our rest, but I'd never had that happen before. But the... Uh, but the dynamic of rest. See, this is the deal. And God's promises, they're there full on. The rest you need, rest I need, it's there for us right now. But you've got to give some priority to participate in it. Now sometimes, if you don't participate in it, God will just lay you out. <laughs> You're rested. Bam! And you're down. Well, that leads us to another promise. Peace. Peace in every circumstance. Where, where can you get that? Is there any amount of technology that gives you peace in every circumstance? No. All right. Is there any human relationship you have that gives you peace in every circumstance? Food. Any food? Gives you peace in every circumstance. Hmm. God gives you peace in every circumstance. Every circumstance. And it's a peace, the way it's defined in Scripture, is that it passes our understanding up. The old language is it passes all understanding or passes all understanding. But it, 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 you, you can't make sense of it. <laughs> You, you can't grasp, how did it come from? Where did it come from? Why is it there? How did it get there? Well, it came from Him. It's unlimited, and it's there for every circumstance. And that's what it is. And, and you're not going to be able to understand it all, but it'll be there. It's peace. Oh, the kind of peace that we labor at in this world I've been hearing about the peace process in the Middle East since I was a little kid. And I think I'll probably be hearing about it till the day I die. And I appreciate those efforts, not mocking it. It's just we labor so hard at peace in our ways. But God says, I've got a peace that passes all understanding. I was in a situation that was violent. The fists were flying at me. The anger was raging. And 
I just asked the Lord to help me. Called for some other guys to help me. And I was covered with peace. In and amidst the fight. It was amazing. Where'd that come from? Circumstances sure didn't generate it. Relationships sure didn't generate it. I was filled with peace. And as I was trying to restrain the situation till help got there, the Lord just covered me in peace. And then when some brothers came, He let me rest in peace. It passes understanding. It's amazing. It's powerful. It's unlimited. It's incredible. There's so many more promises, but the last one for tonight. He gives us the right words to say at the right time through the Holy Spirit. Do you ever struggle with having the right words at the right time? Do you ever feel like the master of having the wrong words at the wrong time? <laughs> yeah. But he says to us when we're following him and when we're representing him and when we're on, when we're on the hot seat of life, he says, don't worry about what you're going to say. I've got that covered. Lean into the promise of this. Lean into the promise of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Seek it. Seek the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. And He will give you the right words at the right time. Every time. I want that. I... I, I I don't like the memories I have of having to clean up after wrong words at the wrong time. I don't like that. And it's been really cool as God's been growing in my life to find that more often than not there's the right words at the right time. And less often there's the wrong words at the wrong time. Because I'm leaning into his promises more. See, this is all part of the incredible abundant life in Christ. So like that guy with the great engagement gig. Don't know what he did with it the rest of his life. But God's promises so far surpass that. And he backs them up every time. Every time. So, when you think about what we're doing here and who we are as men and whether this has been comforting or convicting, there may be some of both, I just want to ask you, what are you doing to lean into the promises of God? What are you doing to draw closer to Him and His presence in your life? I appreciate your prayers because I'm heading out to India on January 17th and I get to participate speaking in a pastor's conference and I get to help dedicate a little rural church over there that some folks in Washington have helped fund to build and it's just going to be a really cool time but it's not so much about what I get to contribute it's about what the Lord wants to do in terms of expanding his view of his kingdom work in my life. And I'm looking forward to leaning into his promises some more. I'm looking forward to seeing how these promises are working in a leper church. Full on. Now, I, I want to add one caveat here. We have a tendency to take these promises and then say life should go smooth. Now, Jesus says in this world you're going to have troubles, but take heart, I've overcome the world. But even more specifically in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, 
there's a, there's a small portion of that chapter. It's often referred to as the, as the chapter of faith. But there's a small portion in that chapter that we often don't pay attention to. But I guarantee you that some of my brothers and sisters in India pay attention to this. Here's the portion. It begins at verse 13. All these faithful ones died without receiving what God had promised. But they saw it all from a distance and welcomed the promises of God. And obviously people who talk like that are looking forward to a country they cannot call their own. If they had met by the country they came from, they would have found a way to go back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he prepared a heavenly city for them. And then if you go over to verse 33, or actually, let me get you to the right place, 35. But others trusted God and were tortured, preferring to die rather than turn from God and be free. They placed their hope in the resurrection to a better life. Some were mocked. Some their backs were cut open with whips. Others were changed in dungeons. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half and others were killed with the sword. Some went about in skins of sheep and goats, hungry and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world. They wandered over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All of these people we have mentioned received God's approval because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had far better things in mind for us that would also benefit them. For they can't receive the prize at the end of the race until we finish the race. You know, memorial services are pretty cool things at times. Sometimes you hate to go to them, but one of the things I always marvel is that more often than not, a grandchild of a grandparent will get up and they say something to the effect that boils down to, I want that quality of my grandpa or grandma in my life forever. They finish the race and what's been released is something that's been planted deeply in the life of a future generation. Promise fulfilled. Unlimited promises of God. Father God, thank you for your promises. Thank you for these men. Bless them tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for just helping me. <clears throat> thank you for being so faithful. And I want to draw into you more. And I want to lean into your promises and not keep kind of resisting part of them. And I want to embrace them and let the abundance of your life flow through me. And I pray that that would be the heart cry of every man here. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, gentlemen. So uh, the rest of the evening uh, is the application part where the rubber meets the road. Uh, so we're going to get into breakout groups. Did everyone who arrived get an agenda on the way in? If you look at the very bottom right corner, and Larry, your right is on this side, okay? <laughs> You'll see a room number. There's room 201, 202, or 203, which is up the stairs, and they're basically right there in the hallway. Um, you're for, uh, so go ahead and head to those uh, rooms for the evening and then uh, there's a facilitator for you for tonight. They will excuse you from there at nine o'clock. All right, thank you gentlemen for being here.